first sock knitting class. My name is Denise, also known as Earth Tones Girl, and this is part two in my color changing series. Today we are going to be focusing on changing color when knitting the heel flap and gusset. So I am so excited to bring that to you today. Um, just as a little refresher, uh, part one of this class was on changing color and knitting a jogless jog so that you don't have a shift in the color when you're knitting. Um, Thank you all so much. The response to that was fantastic. So thank you very, very much. And today we're going to be covering how to change color when you're ready to knit the heel flap and the heel turn, and then how to pick back up the color for doing for working the gusset. So that is what today's class is going to be focusing on. Um, yeah, let's get started. If you have the No Fear Shorty socks pattern, uh, that is the pattern that I will be, that I'm referencing throughout all of these um, classes, all of the No Fear Sock Knitting classes. Do you absolutely need that pattern? No, you don't. But I do reference some of the numbers and the techniques within the tutorials, so it may be helpful for you to purchase a copy of the pattern. So um, I think that's it. I have got my sample all ready, knit up and ready for you. So let's get started. So what we're going to do now is work on the heel flap and the heel turn in the new color. Okay, so if you're following along with the pattern, you've already worked your cuff and you've worked the 15 rounds on the leg. And now we're going to start with the change of color for the heel. So I've got my sample, I'm just gonna put that to the side. I've got my sample all ready. Now here is my tail. This is the tail end of the um, previous color, of this peach color. I am going to tuck this in and just pull that through on the bottom. I'm just going to tuck it in so that it is out. Oh, hold on, there it is. So it's just out of my way. I'll show you what to do with that in just a second. And I'm just going to put my needles into place. Again, this technique, what I'm doing right now, can be applied to, um, to any style of sock knitting, whether it's two circs, magic loop, DPNs, or, um, or nine inch needles, sorry, forgot for a second. So here, I'm just going to just make a little loop over my finger. I'm just going to drape the loop like a little lasso over the color and I'm going to start. Now actually what I have to do is slip the first stitch, so I'm actually going to do that right over the second stitch. Okay, and so now I'm going to slip this one, slip as if to knit, hold this strand out of my way, and knit. Uh, hold on, yes, okay. So slip as if to knit, knit the next one, slip, the next and slip and the next and you're just going to keep doing that across the row now what's happening is you're starting with your slip stitches and these stitches here the peach stitches are going to look a little exaggerated those are going to look a little bit longer than your copper colored stitches or whatever colors you're working on and I'll just show you that right here you see here how they look a little bit longer? That is your first round of the slip of slipping those stitches. It's very difficult. The reason why I didn't weave in this time is because you are slipping. Can you try to do it? Yes, but I don't think the fiddliness of it is necessary. So what I do when I get a few stitches in, or a few stitches across the round, I will actually tie these two ends together so that it closes the gap a little bit. Is it necessary? Not really but it's just something I have always done and I'd never tie a knot. Please don't tie a knot because it's going to be very difficult for you to unpick it. Just tie a really short little bow, okay? Or you could even just tie the two ends together in a slip knot, that's fine too. And I'm just going to, whoops, of course, okay, hold on. <laughs> I always do these things on camera and it just gets really fiddly for me. Okay, so here, I've just done this and I'm just going to tie these two together. There you go. Just give this end a little bit of a pull and I'm just going to secure that. All that I'm basically doing right now is just securing these two ends together and I'm going to tuck those into the sock. Everything gets tucked in and out of your way. Just push it all in there. Tuck, 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 tuck. 
Okay, and I'm just going to keep knitting. I'm going to keep working on my heel flap. Okay, so let me just work across to the other side. So I just did a knit stitch, so slip, knit, slip, knit and I'm just going to continue working across now just wait basically you've already changed the color it's really that simple this is not that complicated and I know that many of you um, who follow along with me and are working um, the scrappy sock cow that I'm hosting right now a lot of you already know how to do this but to the absolute beginner I still wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to do this and then for this last one I'm just going to slip that stitch as if to purl. And then I'm going to turn. Uh, sorry, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to knit that last stitch. <laughs> I don't have my own pattern in front of me. I forgot what to do. <laughs> so I'm just going to knit that last stitch. There we go. I know I can hear you all. No, Denise, that's not what the pattern says to do. <laughs> it's your pattern. Why don't you remember? So now I am going to work back and forth. And I'm going to slip that first stitch as if to purl. And I'm going to purl across the row, just continuing to use the new color. So now I'm going to finish knitting, finish going back and forth on my heel flap and heel turn, and I will show you what to do once that's completed. So here is the heel flap and heel turn, and it is all complete, and I am ready now for the next color. I still have my other color down here, and we're going to weave that in when we come around on the first round with the new color. Um, okay, so I'm going to take my end, which is right here, and now you are in a position to use the instruction from part one of this to weave this end in. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So here is my new color. I'm going to start with that, and I'm going to take this, and whoops find the other end of my needle hang on <laughs> all right and here I go so I'm going to insert my needle here right under the old color the tail of the old color I'm going to take my new color drape that over the needle and I'm going to now start knitting with the new color Okay, so hold on let's find my end there it is you don't really need it to be too long that is more than enough. Let me show you that again because that's not really clear. Um, there it is. Okay, so you don't really you don't really need much more than that. So I'm just going to let that hang, and I'm going to now knit across. So now I have trapped. I'm going to be trapping that over with the new color, and then go under, and then over. I do this a lot slower in part one. So I do recommend watching part one of the color changing series. There are going to be three videos. The third video is going to be how to do this with a short row heel. So in order to really get a better understanding of how to trap that color, I do recommend watching part one. All right, right now, this video is just teaching you how to change the color with the heel flap and gusset. So again, I'm going um, under the old tail and I'm going to do that maybe one or two more times. And I'm going to keep trapping it. And now I'm done. So as you can see, the tail of the heel flap color is now trapped. I have the tail now when I come around, I'm going to weave in the tail of the new color. So I am going to continue across here. I'm dropping this one, just let it hang. And if that's too long, again, just tuck every, as I keep saying, just tuck everything into the sock. You can just trim all these ends later. So I'm just going to continue knitting across. I hope everyone can see. Um, it's a little later in the day here, so the light is a little bit darker, but I think we can all see. And now I'm going to follow the instructions and pick up the number of stitches that I need to go all the way around. And I'm not counting, I'm not doing a heel flap tutorial right now. So I'm just, I'm just going to go right on ahead and just pick up all the stitches that I need. And I'm going to count these out. I'm supposed to pick up 16. So now you are picking up all of these heel flap stitches. I'm gonna go under there with the new color. 
And there you go. So I'm going to go under there and pick up. Again, I am not focusing on, I'm not focusing on exactly how to do this. This has already been covered in um, an earlier episode of the No Fear Shorty Sock class. Okay, so I'm just going to continue going around. And as you can see, I'll just put this down for a second. As you can see, when you're coming around, we are now, we are here. We just came across the heel flap right across here. And now I am coming across and picking up all of these stitches. I will knit across the front of the sock, come across the other side, pick up the other half, and then my round will end here. And then I'm just going to continue, and you're going to do the same thing. The same way that you stop and you did the jog from the previous tutorial, you're just going to continue around, okay? So I'm going to keep knitting around, and I will pick these all up and show you, this goes in, and I'll show you what to do when I get over here. Okay, I am now halfway through the instep stitches, so I'm now going to show this to you in real time and knit across. What I've also done here is I've untied that little bow that I tied in the beginning. What I'm going to do here is take the strand that's coming from the instep stitches, I'm going to weave this way into the gusset. This strand, that I added on the new color for the gusset, I am going to weave in this direction. Okay, so I will show you what that looks like when I get over there. So I'm going to knit across my 16 stitches. Okay, here I go, let's count. That's six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, hope you guys are still with me. <laughs> 12, 13, 14, whoops, okay. So go back a little bit, I apologize. Here's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go back about five or six stitches before the end of the instep. Okay, I'm going to find, hold on, this color right here, and I'm going to start weaving that in. I'm going to put it in between the two stitches, same way we did in the other video in part one, and I'm going to start weaving that in. Okay, and I'm going to do the same over under, so this is going to be over, and then under. This other strand is just, that was, just needs to be tucked in there. Okay, hold on, put my finger back into place, and I'm going to keep, now I'm going to go over, and then under, and this is all going to tighten back up the same way, and now I'm going to go over again. And it is super, super, super wonky. Hold on, let me just come off camera for one second. Pull that through. There we go. And I'm going to slide my needle out and pull this tight. There we go, back into place. Okay, makes sense everybody? Oops, I missed a stitch. Yeah, I accidentally caught uh, there's a lot of yarn going on. So let's undo this last one here. I'm going to undo here and undo here and drop that little guy. There we go. But this is this is actually great. And now what I actually want to pick up is this strand here. Okay, and slide to that on the needle. And then let everything go. This strand belongs over here and I'm going to just pull this, where's the tail end of that? Here it is. So I'm just gonna give everything a little pull and pull this strand here. And now everything is in place, okay? This is hanging out here. We can go onto the back and pull that out of the way. Okay, I'm just going to fish for that. Give that a little pull. Doing, I'm not going to lie, I'm always going to tell you guys the truth. Doing this is very, very fiddly. Can it be done? Absolutely, positively it can be done. Is it my favorite thing in the world to do? Nope, not at all. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to continue picking up these stitches and I'm just going to weave this end in. 
okay, as I'm going along. I'm going to weave in now the tail. This is the tail now from the instep, and I'm going to pick up that extra stitch at the gusset. Uh, hang on a second, I need to get in under here, and I'm going to go under there and just pick everything up together, okay? Actually, it's not where I wanna be, I wanna be here. Okay, there we go. Make sure this is under here. Okay, and I can straighten that out later. And now I'm going to continue picking up. So that was that intersection stitch. And now I'm going to continue picking up all of these stitches coming across here. And what I'm going to do is hold on to this. And as I pick up, I'm going to weave it under and over. Just include it. You're doing the same thing as you're picking up. You may not like this because it is kind of fiddly and you may say to yourself, okay, you know what? I don't care enough about this. I'll just weave in the ends when you're done and you can absolutely do that. Um, but again, this is how you're going to weave those ends in. So I'll meet you back on the other side in one. Here I am at the, almost to the end, you guys. I've got about four more stitches to pick up in here. I've got my tail. Here is the tail from where I started the color change. And again, this is gonna feel, again, a little bit fiddly because it's such a wide gap. It's not tight the way it was in the other one, but it will all work out once you're ready. So now you're going to continue picking up your stitches and doing that same weaving over under effect. So I'm gonna pick up the next one. Whoops, and my tail has popped out. <laughs> you know what you can also do? If you've made your tail too short, which I've done in this case, you can just weave that in at the end, okay? Nothing is going to come apart. So I'm just going to continue picking up my stitches going across here, and I've got one, whoops, one left. And I'm going to, nope, wait, hold on. Let's count and see how many I've got. So here's my 16, here was my extra, and then two, Six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay. Yep. And now I'm going to, now I know that's a large gap, but don't worry about that. And then I'm just going to, and it disappears. And I'm just going to continue coming around to those remaining heel stitches. And I am almost done. Sorry, I hope you can't hear my son in the background. <laughs> He's playing with his sister. And now, as you can see, I have picked up all of my stitches. I have woven in my ends. And with the exception then of this one end right here that I made a little bit too small, okay? All you then have to do is go through and weave it in. Where would I weave it in? Right across, let me see if this will, there you go. Okay, I would weave that in right across that line of stitches right in there. Okay, just take a tapestry needle and just go right across and weave that in. But basically, guys, that's it. That is what you've done. You've now changed color. You've got your contrasting heel, heel flap, and heel turn. Now you're going to continue working your gusset stitches all the way around in this new color. And here you go. I'll just pull this back into focus for a minute. So I am right in here and I'm going to continue decreasing. I'm going to change one, two more times, which would be right here then for the third change and then just keep knitting right down to the toe. And there you have it. There you have it, you guys. Not gonna lie, this video is a little bit clumsy. It's very fiddly to do, hold on, let me just adjust my camera here for a second. It is very fiddly to do the heel flap and gusset with a contrasting heel, but you absolutely can do it. It is not a problem, it is very doable. So that was just a little instruction to help you out with that. I hope that was clear. If it was not, or if you have a question about any part of it, please let me know um, and I will try to answer your questions. As always, leave your questions in the uh, description box or 
uh, the comment box down below. Um, you can also leave me a message in, um, in Ravelry or you can email me and all of the contact information will also be in the description box. Um, I hope that was clear, you guys. Next up is going to be um, how to put in a short row heel. That is going to be much, much easier. Um, much clearer, much easier, much, much less fiddly also. Um, so the next video, part three, and that will be the, the final video in this three part series is how to change color um, with a short row heel. So I can't wait to bring that to you also. I hope you found this helpful. Um, I hope the video is also not too dark. It's, it's the end of the day and we just got a little burst of sunlight right at the end. Thank you, Mother Nature. <laughs> so um, again, I hope that was all clear and uh, I will see you for part three in just a little bit. Bye everybody. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.